uh, I want to introduce you in this short uh, video to an open source uh, chemical drawing two and three dimensional mole view. It's excellent, particularly for beginning students. I actually use it from time to time uh, to create three dimensional images that I then use with other uh, chemical platforms. Uh, I think you have, well, you have the link for it, or you can notice it here, uh, noted here, moldview.org, and uh, you start by uh, uh, closing this. Now, I'm going to go to uh, new, so I'm going to erase this, and uh, I use so many different programs, so many different ones. So up there at the top, I uh, X'd it out. On this left side, you draw your structures in 2D. Now, you're going to be doing that in Chapter 1, and it's very, very important that you work on this and get better and better because this is how we communicate information in organic chemistry, which is Introduction to Molecular Science. We transmit knowledge through symbolism, and... This is a very important feature of organic chemistry to realize that uh, chemical structures, the more you learn, the more they uh, create mental imagery when you're doing research. Let me start you off nice and easy. You have single, double, triple bonds, single and uh, solid and broken lines. Now that will come into play when we get to a chapter called stereochemistry. Stereos, Greek for solid, three-dimensional, which is so important in organic and biochem and molecular sciences, synthetic biology, molecular physiology, molecular genetics. All of these things are waiting for you. These disciplines are waiting for you. <clears throat> let's not, <coughs> excuse me, let's not worry about solid and broken lines. There are some exotics here that won't mean much to you right now, such as a hexagon with three double bonds. You cover that in organic too with me. Uh, that is uh, the structure of benzene, and that is a prototypical so-called aromatic compound. Let's not worry about it now. Not the chemistry, more the drawing right now of simple hydrocarbons. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is grab the single bond. And I'm going to put one there, one there, one there, and then L-drag. Now I'm doing L drag, holding down the L button. Let me erase it. Try it again. One, L drag, L drag, L drag, L drag. Now that is a shorthand <clears throat> notation for one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Now a hydrocarbon, a saturated hydrocarbon has no double or triple bonds. It's an alkane, a paraffin. It is hydrocarbon saturated. The carbons, as you're going to study, are each sp3 hybridized carbons forming bonds with other sp3 carbons or with unhybridized atomic s electrons from hydrogen. Carbon is very frequently found with hydrogen and it's found in chains and rings and you'll be studying all these things. So that is called a hexane, and that's the shorthand notation. Every carbon must be tetravalent. Now you notice what you have is a carbon bound to a carbon, bound to a carbon, etc. That's one bond for this terminal carbon. One bond right there. But every carbon has to be tetravalent. So that means there will be three additional bonds not shown, and they will be, unless you change it, hydrogens. Now, let's go to the uh, 2D to 3D. And I'll click over there. And uh, I'll select this. Here, I had just uh, put one there. Oh, boy, I didn't want to do that. Undo. Let's start. Oh, boy. See, when I go too slow, then I make mistakes. One, two, three four, five, six. It's good for you to see the mistakes. Now, what we want to do is go 2D to 3D. And 
they tell you at the bottom, they're very cautious. This is fine for you as a beginning student. But at a higher level, you've got to be very careful. Now, I've used this to build um, um, various uh, polypeptides. And uh, one thing leads to another. We won't worry about that now. So I'll just click don't show again, but you've got to check everything. Okay, now, if you check uh, uh, and rotate this, hold down the L button, there's your three-dimensional. And you can see the whites are hydrogens, the grays are carbons. Every carbon has four bonds. So you can rotate and examine. And uh, what about viewing it? Well, model, ball and stick. But I generally use wireframe. Very nice rendering here. And rendering is a very important part of organic chemistry and molecular science. If you go to the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry, I'll show you that in a different tutorial video. Um, rarely do you find a paper without beautiful ra uh, rend rendering, uh, graphics, uh, visualization. Let's go to uh, stick. That one I use a lot in molecular modeling. I uh, model receptor sites and... Uh, for example, I've been examining the so-called S1 glycoprotein of the coronavirus. And the S1, it's like a two-stage rocket. S1 docks to the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme 2, ACE2 human receptor site. And uh, that ACE2 is in the, in the human uh, embedded, uh, it's a receptor protein embedded in the cell membrane. There's an extended helix an exposed helix, and the SN1 docking domain of the virus bonds to that. And uh, later on, I'll show you the protein data bank, and you can download X-ray or so-called uh, NMR uh, imagery to begin modeling studies. So that's why it's very important that you get this down and you're comfortable with it so you can see it that way. Now, let me go back uh, over here to um, model. And uh, you can vary that. I wouldn't do a space fill right now. You do that later on with drug design. When all is said and done, you can get an idea of the volume and surface area requirements of the drug. You don't start with that now. Let's ignore it. Uh, let's go back to um, ball and stick. Now, what we can do is go over here to uh, the JMOL. Now, what you should do right now, you can energy minimize. Now, that is the first thing you learn in computational chem. I'll be showing you that with other platforms. Chem office, wave function, a little at a time. But you can minimize that. And what it will do is okay it's done it will give you a reasonable 3d image and each of those carbons is a tetrahedron now the key to success in organic chemistry is knowing how to draw and interpret structures correctly how to convey in your mind some 3d imagery from a 2d sketch now that sketch over there on the left it doesn't look like that in 3D. It's six tetrahedrons. And a classic tetrahedron has a bond angle, three consecutive atoms. Let's say a hydrogen, carbon, carbon. That's a bond angle. It should be 109.5 degrees or close to it for a classic tetrahedron. Now, you can also use unshared or lone pairs. So if you had ammonia, NH3, with a lone pair on nitrogen, Lone pair, nitrogen H, that would be a bond angle. So it's atoms and or unshared pairs of electrons. Okay, let's interrogate the distance. And I'm going to want to know the distance here. And it's 0 0.152 nanometers. That would be 1.52 angstroms. That's pretty darn good. Now, they keep reminding you that uh, you got to be careful with this, but you're beginning students. There's nothing wrong with that. 
So that's a bond angle. Now, you can also go back to JMOL and clean to remove that and say, let me try another. Let me try, uh, that was the distance. Let's try angle. One, two, three. One eleven point eight. A classic situation is 109.5. Now, there will be three very important numbers. 109.5, a classic tetrahedron, and indeed the, sim the symbol of carbon, organic carbon, is a tetrahedron. There are two journals, you know, one is called Tetrahedron Letters and the other is Tetrahedron, founded by Sir Robert Robinson, uh, an eminent uh, UK organic chemist. And uh, Tim, uh, a tetrahedron can be a symbol of life. Now, the pyramids in Egypt, uh, Egypt they're, uh, those are not, the pyramids are not tetrahedrons, but you get the image that it is very much, it could be a symbol of life. Any organic chemist seeing a symbol of a tetrahedron thinks immediately of carbon, and co organic and biochemists would right away associate that oftentimes with life chemistry carbon-based life chemistry. So 111.8 is very close to 109.5. The next number is 120, and that 120 degrees is a bond angle uh, conveying planarity, planar. That will be carbon where it's sp2 hybridized. And finally, 180 degrees, a linear, and that would be a carbon that's sp hybridized forming triple bonds. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and boy, oh boy, you're going to be studying all of them hydrocarbons and later on aromatics which are hydrocarbons okay so that gives you an idea of the bond angle and then of course you can go to j mole and clean that up and even a torsion now i don't want to get into torsion with you yet that's four consecutive atoms that's going to be very important actually it's going to be in many cases more important than a bond angle a torsional would be four consecutive atoms so one two three four and we'll have to go to torsion. One, two, three, four. And uh, negative 23.8. Negative 23.8. So the absolute value of that would be a dihedral or torsional angle, 24 degrees. Now we'll be talking about this much more. The so-called torsional angle or dihedral angle. And in fact, that's extremely important. That measurement is extremely important in biochemistry. You wait and see when you study uh, peptides, polypeptides, proteins. Oh boy, DNA, RNA. Okay, so this that's a simple example. Now, let me show you another one. So I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to go back to the uh, 2D sketcher. And I want to show you this, just for argument's sake, the aromatic ring. Over here, L, uh, L click, and I'll put one down there. Now that's a hexagon. There are three double bonds. Those are called uh, those. That second bond is a pi bond. Every line represents, you know, in the world of calculi, every line represents a covalent bond and two electrons being shared covalently. So what you have there are six carbons, a hexagon, in a ring with alternating pi bonds or double bonds. We'll be talking about this in lecture in chapter one. Orbital hybridization of carbon, sp2. When you have a hybridized carbon, sp2, overlapping, making a bond with another sp2 carbon, uh, that would uh, lead to a second type of covalent bond called a pi bond. This first one you study is the sigma. And carbon can form sigma and pi bonds. So there you have alternating pi bonds. That's not our point. We just want to draw it. Now, I'm going to put in a single bond right here, quite arbitrarily right there. Another one here. Then I'm going to put a double bond right there. And I'm going to put an oxygen right there. Now, oxygen is portrayed as a red color. Nitrogen's blue. 
This is a very important substance called acetophenone. You will study how it's made in organic too. I use McMurray, so aromatics, that's covered in organic too. Keep in mind, each organic book, the order of events can vary. Some uh, very successful books introduce aromatic compounds in the first semester. Okay, now, that is shorthand. Let's go to the 3D. There it is. I clicked on that. And you can see your three double bonds. Double, single, double, single, double, single. That's resonance. When you hear double, single, double, single, oh boy, the door opens to resonance. And you review that in chapter one of McMurray, chapter two. And of course, you should have gotten some of that in general chem when you studied bonding. Resonance is one of the most important concepts you can ever study and utilize in organic chemistry. Now, there's a carbon double bond to oxygen. That means two bonds, four electrons being shared. There are two unshared or lone pairs on the oxygen not shown there. And then there's a carbon with three hydrogens. So oxygen is bivalent, and one way it can form a bivalent situation is to form, let's say, a so-called double bond to carbon. And thus, it has eight electrons around it. Two unshared pairs, each two electrons, that's four, and then sharing two there and two there. So a total of uh, four. The rule of eight. Four bonds or uh, two uh, lone pairs is four electrons and two bonds with carbon. That's a total of eight electrons around oxygen, right? The outer shell is then filled. The oxygen, I gotta be careful with this. The oxygen we teach you in beginning organic is sp2 hybridized. Uh, there is a very good evidence from spectroscopy that it may not quite be that simple, but let's leave that alone for now. Now, you can rotate that and examine it. And as I showed you, you can go to under model wireframe. When your molecules get very big, eventually you'll even hide the hydrogens. There's so many of them. But in the beginning, you don't want to do that. You want to draw in correctly in 2D, visualize in 3D. Uh, you can save these, incidentally. Uh, you can save these by uh, exporting. Let's see if I can find that for you. There it is, export. And you can save as a mole file or 3D model image. So I'll click on that and with my Mac that can be saved as a uh, .png and the model here uh, and of course you would then uh, download it to your desktop and I would change that name right away to a set of phenone or some catalog number so you can then use the download option again with a second model. And I'm not going to save this now but you can. And many advanced chemical platforms can read this. For example, I use Cygress. Cygress is very good for building 3D on the fly, but there's no 2D sketcher. So I do a sketch with Moleview or ChemOffice. Then I create a 3D and I retain and save the, P, the uh, 3D file. Often I save it as a P. DB, Protein Data Bank, PDB extension is a three-dimensional. And uh, you can also uh, save this uh, as a mole file. I'll cancel that. Or you can save it as uh, a 3D model image. Either way. More about this later. Right now, you just want to draw and visualize in 3D. Let's do a uh, bond angle. Uh, J mole. Let's do the angle. One, this carbon, this carbon. 120 degrees, planar. Those white atoms, hydrogens, are coplanar. That aromatic ring or benzene ring is a disc. 
What about this uh, here? We'll uh, clean this. How about this carbon oxygen? Let's do carbon, carbon, oxygen. Bond angle. Carbon, carbon, carbon. 123.5, which is closest to 120, not 180 or 109.5, planar. Very close to what it should be. Now remember, we can also do energy minimization. And uh, first I'll click this out. Let's do an energy minimization. Oh boy, it's done already. And when you, you should always do that first, minimize the energy. What that is, I'll show you later on. Um, you're putting it in a force field with molecular mechanics. It's described in McMurray at the end of chapter one or two. I've been doing it for years, and uh, you basically clean it up that you get a normal posture. You don't want to contort it. A typical human posture is not uh, osteoporosis, bent over, of course. Uh, you have a mental image of a normal human posture, but athletes, gymnasts, uh, dancers uh, would have a, perhaps a completely different posture, a good posture. But um, what we're doing there is giving you something more reasonable. You see, 119.9 after minimization, close to 120. So never forget to minimize. That's why I left that out to show you. Okay, so that's your next example. And I'll show you one more. I'll X that out. And I'm going to show you a heterocycle. I'm going to go over there. See, there's a three, four, five, six member. I'm going to grab uh, a six membered ring. Oh boy. Okay. And I'll L click and put one there. Now that's a hexagon, but it's not going to be with three double bonds in it. This is going to be different. And I'm going to put an oxygen right in this ring and a nitrogen blue in this ring. Now later on you'll know that this chemical, the common name for it is morpholine. Now we're going to need an H on that nitrogen, but I'm going to leave it out because nitrogen is going to be tri trivalent. There's a lone pair not shown, an unshared pair, and there's also an H. So nitrogen has the lone pair, two bonds to carbon, and a bond to hydrogen. So three bonds, two, four, six electrons being shared, and the lone pair makes eight. This oxygen has two, four, and two lone pairs. It has eight. Now, let me go to a 3D. And there it is. By default, it put the H in for nitrogen. So what you have is the oxygen with two bonds, two unshared pairs not shown, and the lone pair on nitrogen and the NH bond. Now, don't forget to minimize it. Energy minimization. It'll stretch and bend a tiny bit, and then it'll be done. And now you have a reasonable structure, and you can see that is not a planar ring. That's called a chair ring. You're going to be studying that in Chapter 3. Okay? Morpholine. That's the common name. You know when you're going to see that again with me? Organic 2, aldehydes and ketones, like Chapter 19. So you have a long way to go. But you'll be there before you know it. Now, uh, let's see what else. Uh, there's other fancy things that I'm not going to show you right now. But one, oh, one example, spectroscopy. Choose a spectrum. Now, they're going to, here they're going to, for this compound, report the mass spectrum. Now, I'll be showing you that in organic lab. An organic lab. I will introduce you to mass spectrometry, and uh, then you get from that a typical fragmentation pattern. And they're showing from zero up to about 90 there. Now, we'll do more of this later. Don't worry about it now, but they're showing you some of the fragments that form. Fragmentation pattern. And there, the cutoff there is up to 80. I'll just let that go for now. We'll come back to this later in the course. Okay. So then uh, we'll go back to um, the 2D. 
and that was the first one we did. So I will be giving you a couple of structures to draw, and I will ask you to get the 3D, and I will ask you to then email me the file, and then I can see how you drew, how you did. And uh, here with the 2D sketch, uh, you might even want to save that. Structural form formula image. And then you can save that. And then you can attach it in a Word document. So when I tell you, let's say, draw out cocaine, you would be able to send me the 2D and the 3D that you produced. Or I might ask you to tell me what a bond angle is for a certain carbon nitrogen bond. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to go and bookmark this. This is a very, very valuable platform. I'm not going to show you proteins and some of the wonderful things that can be done there. You're just studying, starting to study organic. Okay. Bye for now.